In 1806, the Tennessee General Assembly provided for schools in every county of the new state. As a result of this early educational legislation, Bradley Academy was established as Murfreesboro's first school under this act. Bradley's first incarnation was a log building completed in 1811 on land donated by the Murphy family. One of Bradley Academy's earliest and most notable students was future United States President James K. Polk, who studied Greek, Latin, mathematics, geography, literature, and philosophy at Bradley. He delivered the commencement address at his graduation from Bradley Academy in 1814. In the late 1820s and early 30s, a brick Bradley Academy was built and hosted classes of Union University while that institution's facility was being constructed on Main Street. Upon completion, the buildings stood vacant for nearly 40 years, suffering severe damage from neglect and the Civil War. In 1884, Rutherford County reorganized its school system, and the building once again housed students, this time exclusively African Americans. Bradley Academy was the first step toward formal education for blacks in the community. At that time, Bradley had three teachers and 150 students in elementary grades. The decrepit building had no running water, no electricity, and only one stove. The 18 brick Bradley Academy building, although it had survived the Civil War, was still in a dilapidated state after the Civil War. African Americans quickly moved in to use this building as a school building, but they didn't have windows, they didn't have running water. Uh, there was a report of just one stove to heat the entire building. Uh, students would have to bring their own firewood every morning. Um, they would have to carry water in from a well or from whatever sources uh, to use during the day. So the, while African Americans were happy to have their own building, it was uh, far from perfect in, in terms of uh, early education in Rutherford County for African Americans. In the early part of the 20th century, the Tennessee General Assembly passed a series of laws to strengthen education for both black and white students. Ever increasing enrollment and the deteriorated state of the building prompted the black community to call for a modern new facility and Bradley Academy became one of the first schools to take advantage of these educational reforms. Construction of the present building began in 1917 and was opened in 1918. The building is architecturally significant as an example of a popular design for schoolhouses in the early 20th century. With its opening in 1918, Bradley Academy became a social and cultural center of the black community, as well as its main educational facility. The school was home to both elementary and high school students, as the first three-year high school for blacks in Rutherford County accredited by the Southern Association. Bradley had a strong domestic science program, an excellent orchestra, a much heralded glee club, and football and basketball and baseball teams. The success of Bradley's academic, athletic, and civic programs renewed black participation in the education process, encouraging enrollment, recognizing once again the need for more and better facilities for black education the Murfreesboro School Board approved the construction of Holloway High School. When Holloway opened its doors in 1928, Bradley once again became an elementary school. Teaching in this classroom was a pleasure. I had between 28 and 30 boys and girls. They were well-trained, well-behaved, and it was a great pleasure 
to come to school every morning because you knew you were going to meet around 28 or 30 smiling faces. This is the way my classroom looked when I taught years and years ago. This is always said that we didn't have a library. We used our uh, orange crates for a library and uh, we put our books in little orange crates and things of that sort. We didn't have the things. And when I had that little music and I taught my children all kinds of little songs, you know, but I would get a comb and put tissue paper on the comb and hum through that comb and that made my music. And I taught them little dances and I taught them songs and things of that sort and they loved it and I loved it too. The difficulties, if any, were very few. The children who came to school knew that they had to behave. If there were any ugliness going on, it was reported to the parents. At that time uh, in school, we visited the homes. We knew what the homes were like. We knew the parents. And if a child gave any trouble at school, we reported it to the parent, and the parents saw that and didn't have that trouble anymore. But my greatest achievement was, now that the children have grown up, it was just a pleasure, as I said, in teaching these children, and now that the children have grown up to see that some of them are judges, doctors, morticians, teachers, nurses, homemakers. And it makes me feel so good to meet those children now. I said children, of course they are grown up now, but they'll always be children to me. Bradley Academy ceased to be a school in the 1960s but a new integrated elementary school on Mercury Boulevard retained the name. This building stood in existence uh, as an African-American school until the integration of the school systems during the late 50s and early 60s. I'm not sure of the exact date that Bradley Academy Elementary School closed, um, but it was around the 1950s, early 50s. And at that point, all the black students from Bradley Academy School were integrated into a new school over on the corner of Mercury and Broad Street, which was also named Bradley Academy Elementary School. After the school was vacated by the African-American students, the city took the building over. It had actually always been owned by the city, but the city started using it for storage. They gutted the inside of the building, sold off all the school desks, and just used it for basic storage. Uh, between 1960 and 1990, um, the building served different functions. Uh, at one point, they built an attachment, an annex on the back of the building that they serviced school buses out of. Um, at various times, there was different meetings held in the building. Uh, some city offices were in the building, but for the most part, it stood vacant. Um, it was just a storage facility, didn't have much use, and for that reason, was this building became and fell into a dilapidated state. The nonprofit Bradley Academy Historical Association was chartered in 1990 for the purpose of reclaiming and rehabilitating the 1917 building. Bradley Academy was placed on the National Registry of Historic Places in 1990, and in 1991, the Tennessee Historic Commission erected a historic marker at the site to indicate its importance to the community. By 1990, uh, there was rumors that the city might tear the building down. The city wasn't sure what to do with the building. They were afraid it was gonna cost too much and it was, uh, the building was too old to rehabilitate for city uses. At that point, the Bradley Academy Historical Association was formed by some concerned African-American citizens here in the community, really here just in the neighborhood, that didn't wanna see their historic school building and their identity uh, torn down. Uh, they organized a nonprofit uh, organization, Baja Incorporated, for the sole purpose of reclaiming the school building from the city, rehabilitating or preserving the school building through restoration efforts, and then to reopen the building like we have it today as both a museum to preserve the history and culture, diverse culture of this 
uh, community in this county, as well as opening it up as a cultural center to serve all citizens of the county as well. During the 1990s, the Bradley Academy Historical Association, the MTSU Center for Historic Preservation, the City of Murfreesboro, the Tennessee Historical Commission, and Congressman Bart Gordon, with substantial assistance from the Christie Houston Foundation, the Tennessee General Assembly, and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, totally renovated the building and reopened it to the public in 1999, making Bradley Academy once again a vital part of the community. Bradley Academy was almost like my second home. The teacher was your mom, your dad, your nurse, your doctor, your minister, <laughs> your counselor, all of these things rolled into one. And we, did, we didn't hesitate to go to our teachers to tell them about any problems that we experienced. And believe it or not, they always had an answer for us. Miss Lord taught you music. She taught you how to keep your body healthy. She taught you how to eat the proper foods. She taught you how to have respect for other people. And all of those things, coupled with all the other teachings that we got from the teachers that were here at Bradley Academy, helped to make us, as adults, what we are. They expected the best. They would accept no less than the best. And I guess, as far as I'm concerned, it put me in a position where I had the attitude that I can't fail. Anything that I make up my mind to do, I can do it. I can do it. I think you realize your school pride once you become an adult and come back and see this place. It has been preserved. It is now a museum and a cultural center. But to walk through this building, to see some of the pictures that are on display, to walk into the classrooms that were a part of your lives many, many years ago. I think you experience your greatest pride when you come back for visitations. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until we're out of the environment. And once we're out of the environment and we go back and we see that this place has helped to mold our lives and shape our lives into what we are today, we have a lot of pride about Bradley. As a historic landmark, the Bradley Academy building is significant in its identification with the Afro-American struggle for equal education and as a symbol of the city and the county's commitment to education since 1811.